thank you for allowing me to address this audience uh, this afternoon on a topic of great importance, which will, I believe, be transformative to the world and to Ecuador uh, in the years to come, in the 21st century, not next year, not 10 years from now, but in a time that is significant uh, to people who look forward to uh, the next 20 years or more. And before I go further, I would like to know whether we're set up for you to see the slides, the PowerPoint slides that, thank you, uh, that I will be, would like to show with this talk. So, two questions. Can you hear me? And are you seeing a slide? Uh, I, I heard a, a fragment of that. Yes? Yes, okay. Uh, you can see the slides? No. Uh, uh, Dr. Schreffler, please continue. Uh, I, in, in, uh, can, can, can someone in the audience please raise your hand if you can see a slide that says advanced nanotechnology on the screen? Hands up if you can see? No. Um, so I would like to know from, you can see. That's a hand I see. Yes? Thank you. So, I will, having uh, the technology now in place, not of nanotechnology, but the very confusing world of computer technology, uh, we'll proceed with, with my talk on nanotechnology. So, to begin with, if I may have the next slide. The, I will be discussing what the technology is in a fundamental sense, then addressing the question of why it is revolutionary, how it can transform the world in a major way, uh, following on that, what it can do in human terms, what it can make, what it can make possible for people, then a very few words on the path forward, the steps that will be required to bridge the gap, to move forward from the present technology base that we have in the laboratory today and industry today through stages of development to the very advanced nanotechnologies that I will be discussing in the talk. And then finally, uh, outline some of the global context, uh, what this could mean in terms of the UN development goals. So the next slide here which says, what is nanotechnology? Today the term is most widely used to refer to any technology that has components at a nanoscale, 100 nanometers, equivalently one-tenth of a micron. The nanotechnology that I will be discussing, however, is something that means more than that. It's a future revolutionary technology based on nanoscale machinery, not just particles, not fibers, but machines, that are able to build products with atomic precision, with all of the atoms in a designated place, and thank you, uh, and with digital control. So this technology is more not so much a technology about products, but about production processes, ways of making things, ways of making a very wide range of products in new ways. Uh, with a different cost structure and different consequences. So to address the nature of the technology on the next slide, when I say digital, one parallel is that in the digital world we process information in discrete pieces, in bits. Here the discrete pieces are atoms. Uh, also digital control, computer control of the process very fast, machines that work at millions of cycles per second, uh, efficient, the amount of energy required is modest, the amount of waste produced is small, uh, very precise control both of the product and of the waste that are produced so it can be clean, and as I mentioned, a revolutionary characteristic of making structures, materials, and machines and electronics that are precise all the way down to the fundamental building blocks of matter. And this will be, if I may have the next step on the slide, 
not an incremental advance, not a, a small step, but as the technology emerges and matures, a very deep transformation, something more of a step function going forward. To give more of an impression of the nature of the technology, here are some pictures of computer simulations of machines that can be understood today but cannot yet be built. These are gears, the round uh, components are individual atoms, and this gives a sense of the nature of the structure and the moving parts that would constitute the fundamental components and mechanisms of this kind of technology. Uh, components like that are only useful when they form larger systems. Uh, here is a larger system. It's a portion of a productive system. And if I, uh, this is the next slide, excuse me. And if you could click one more time just to show an update there. Uh, you can see there a flow path where small molecules are coming in. They're being transformed step by step into reactive parts and added to build a, a larger structure on the conveyor belt below. Uh, so the, the point of this slide is that uh, nanoscale machines can manipulate individual molecules, put them together to make complex structures. And then the next slide, uh, which shows a box. Uh, and this illustrates the way in which very small mechanisms can be used to make large products, products on a human scale. On the left are uh, bottles which would contain simple chemical compounds, the sorts of things that you find in industry today, uh, materials like, uh, like acetone, uh, simple hydrocarbons, and so forth. And these molecules would enter the machine, they would be processed by nanoscale machinery, which would put them together to make larger components, which would then be put together to make larger components in a process that works uh, click once on the slide. In a process that, uh, one more time, one more click, that puts components together to make larger and larger structures until finally there is something of the size that people can handle and use. Uh, uh, things like computers, photovoltaic cell arrays, and so on. Uh, this process extends, as this slide shows, to assembling things on an industrial scale. Next. So now I'd like to say why this technology should be viewed as revolutionary. 